At the close of the 20th century, there are many critical battles facing America. Entrepreneurs versus courts, children versus bureaucracies and teacher unions, taxpayers facing 40% plus tax burdens. Given that all these vital and quite difficult battles revolve around freedom, we asked Dr. Friedman whether he was optimistic or pessimistic as we enter a new millennium. You're asking a very complicated question. I think there are two, two reasons to be optimistic. One is that ideas have changed. The rhetoric 50 years ago was very different from the rhetoric now. 50 years ago, the rhetoric was that everybody was a socialist. All intellectuals were socialists. They all believed that government was the answer to every problem. Today, nobody believes in socialism if you listen to them. That's the rhetoric. The reality is that we are much less free now than we were 50 years ago. Government is bigger, takes a larger fraction of our income, it imposes more controls on us. We are freer in some dimensions. There's been great social progress in tolerance of minorities. Our racial problem has been much improved, not, not through government, but, but through private activity. Nonetheless, that rhetoric will ha has, is having its effect. There has been a reduction in government price and wage regulation, the kind of thing, the deregulation of airlines, the deregulation uh, of uh, uh, communication. But what we have tended to do is to replace that by social regulation, the uh, aid to disability, the OSHA, OEUC, that kind of environmental thing, that kind of thing. So the question is, will the rhetoric, will the change in intellectual ideas carry through and produce a change in actual policy? I think there is a tendency for that. That's one source of optimism. But I think a much more uh, reliable source of optimism is the growth of the Internet. In your area, the major, factor, the major effect of the Internet will be to make it harder for government to collect taxes. Governments can collect taxes best on things that don't move. Mm -hmm. Land is an ideal basis of taxation because you can't take it away. Yep. <clears throat> Individual states cannot go as far in taxing personal income as the federal government can because people can move from one state to the other more, re more easily than they move across countries. <clears throat> the Internet is going to make it very difficult to collect taxes on services of all kinds. After all, you can complete these transactions in cyberspace, not on the ground. You can, uh, you can uh, uh, computer companies now are getting their uh, programming done in India. Mm -hmm. I doubt that anybody's paying any taxes on any of that. No. So that I think that the internet is going to be one of the major forces for reducing the role of government. The one thing that's missing, but that will soon be developed, is a reliable e-cash, a method whereby on the Internet you can transfer funds from A to B without A knowing B or B knowing A, the way in which I can take a $20 bill and hand it over to you, and there's no record of where it came from. And you, you may get that without knowing who I am. That kind of thing will develop on the Internet, and that will make it even easier for people to use the Internet. Of course, it has its negative side. It means that uh, the gangsters, the people who are engaged in illegal transactions, will also have an easier way to carry on their business. But I think that the a tendency to make it harder to collect taxes will be a very important positive effect of the Internet.